Hi everybody, welcome to lesson number three in the Intermediate Tutorials for Microsoft Word. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to insert shapes, tables, and format tables. I'm going to be breaking this tutorial up into two different parts, part one and part two. Part one will be adding a basic table and um, changing some colors and formatting. Part two is going to be using the same type of skills, but we're going to do it in a calendar format, which is a little bit different, a little bit more rows, tables, editing, and so forth. So for part one, I have a sample up on my screen. Again, another example of what I do in my first grade classroom. This is called our problem of the day in math. And the students have four different uh, boxes that they need to complete in our math problem of the day. I have a header. I have clip bar, I have a page border, I have a table, I have some shapes, I have formatted my text, and I've added some color to each of the boxes of my table. So what I'm going to do is start with uh, somewhat of a simpler template, and we're going to work from here. I'm going to backtrack and show you how I got to this point, and then uh, we're going to go from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this table for us. So you can see right from the beginning how I get to this. First thing I did was I added a page border. Okay, I added this little black and white art at a 19 point. I added a header and a footer. I insert, clicked on header, and let me delete that text and type name with a line and date with a line. I can format my text by changing the font, the size, and I can center it if I'd like. Okay, so now I have my name, my date, and underneath that I'm actually going to, in my header, also write problem of the day. So my title appears in the top of my uh, document. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a table. And that's one of the first things that I'm going to show you in this tutorial. If I go to insert table, there are two ways I can do this. I can click on a table because I have four different components that they're going to be completing, which is basically um, two columns and two rows. I can drag my mouse across however many boxes I need. If I needed uh, four columns and two rows, I can drag, I can make a four by two table. If I wanted to make a four by five table, I would just drag my mouse and up at the top it'll tell you uh, the size table. Because I'm doing a two by two, I'm going to click a two by two. The other way I can do this, if I delete this, I go to insert table and I can click insert table and I can actually manually type two columns, two rows, click OK. It's um, six of one, half dozen of the other. It's really whatever preference you have as far as adding a table. Now, in order for me to get to, let me go back and show you, the space that I created in each of these um, boxes, all I did was I clicked enter. So let's make sure I can measure. Let me go back to the beginning. Let's count one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, not quite big enough, so I come back up. Maybe I add two more. And that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll add one more. Okay, so now if I go to print preview, I have my table that looks similar to my other um, example. Once I've done this, I can go ahead and add the text. Draw a picture of the story. Okay. Use counters to illustrate the story problem. Here, what is the question? And number four, write a number of sentences. So in each box, the students are required to do a different um, activity. Now, I'm going to highlight all of my text, and I'm going to align my text back to the left for the purpose of this activity. Now, I can go ahead and highlight each uh, sentence. I can change each one to be a different color. This is all part of that formatting that we've learned how to do 
in previous tutorials. And let's make this purple. Okay, now that I've done this, I can go ahead and format my table. Now in order to format my table, if you look in the left upper corner, you see um, a set of four, um, four arrowheads. If you click right here, it highlights the entire box. You can double click that and it brings you where up at the top of the toolbar says table data design. Notice there are all different colors to select from. Now the beauty of Microsoft 2010 is that you can just drag your mouse over any of these pictures and there are tons of different colors to look at. A lot of them are already pre-formatted. You don't even need to choose the colors, they are chosen for you. But I like to choose my own colors. So again I'm going to double click my table and if I come up to shading I can choose one color Okay, perhaps I want this light blue. Now each of my four boxes are light blue. If I want each of my boxes to be a different color, all I have to do whoops, is highlight all the way up. I just highlight the box and I can go to shading and I can change it to be purple or maroon. I can change this box if I start at the bottom Okay, and I can click this one. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Okay, let's change this one to be light pink. Then down here I want this box to be yellow. And finally I'll leave this box light blue. Now you can obviously tell that some of our font uh, I'm sorry, our colors do not work with the background, so you can go ahead and choose any colors that you want that will work. Okay, let's just make these a little bit darker. Okay, very good. Okay, so now I have my table. I formatted my table with different colors. Another thing that you can do with your table is if you double click, you can come up here and you can change the thickness of the table. Okay, the pen color will change the thickness of your table. You can also come up here and you can change the border. Now that means that if you want no border around your table, you click the uh, where it says no border and you'll see that there's no lines around it. If I unclick, the border is gone. So now I have it just broken up into four colors. You would really never even know that this is a table. You would just think it's four different boxes. If I want, let's double click this again, and I want to have my four borders, I would click all borders. Now notice because, whoops, because I changed the thickness of the outside box, I can come in and make it a little bit skinnier. Okay, I can have it thick, it's how whatever I, really whatever I want. So that is another way to format my table. Now, and also in this uh, tutorial, I had said that we were going to insert shapes. So how I do that is if I go to insert and I go to shape, there are a variety of different shapes that I can choose from. If I was making um, a web, um, a brainstorming web for students, a pre-writing um, type of template, perhaps I would want to draw circles and have arrows coming from each uh, circle and have the students, like a, like a graphic organizer, I could add arrows, I could add circles, I can use all different shapes. Maybe I wanted to make a flow chart, I can use a table and add a flow chart. Again, it's what you're using in your classroom. These are all different options that you can use. I, for the sake of this, am going to find a circle because in one of my directions, it says use counters to illustrate the story problem. Now for first grade, oftentimes we're not quite sure of some of the vocabulary or we're unable to read some of the bigger words. So maybe in here, I would insert a few counters. How did I do that? I'll do it one more time. Insert, shape, circle, and I stretch it to be the size that I want. Now if I click in this circle just once, I can make it black if I like. I can change the color of the shape just like I do anything else with formatting my text, my word art, uh, my backgrounds. Um, I'm going to just stick with black.
Now I want to use two counters so I can control uh, C for copy and control V for paste. Um, let's see, control C, control, whoops. Let's try that again. Let's right click copy, right click paste. Let's try that. And now I've put in some counters for my students who may need some sort of illustration. Okay, use counters and that's how you can put a shape. Now what is the question? Maybe here I want to insert a shape that is a cloud, a thinking cloud as we call it. So there would be a thinking cloud so that it helps them to say, hmm, what's the question? Now the beauty of shapes is that I can also add text within these shapes. If I go to insert text box, choose that simple text box, and maybe I'll type in, hmm, okay, to show them I need to think about what is the question asking me. I can change the style. I can make it bigger. I can change the color. And there's my text box. I can move it right into my shape. Now I can adjust my shape by dragging the sides to make it a little bit bigger to fit my text box or I can shrink my text box down to be something that looks like this. Okay? Okay, now, let's say that I have my text box and I don't want this, um, the line around it. If I double click my text box, it brings me to the formatting toolbar. I can change the text fill. Maybe I want my background to be, I'm sorry, text fill will be just the text color which I've already changed. Let's stick with black. Maybe I want my text outline to be gray. Maybe I want no outline at all. So that what that will do is take away any type of outline in my box. Finally, I can come up to text effect and I can give a shadow Okay, I can do basically anything that I'd like to do with my text. Another thing I can do is come over to Shape Fill, and I can take away my shape outline. Okay, so maybe I want a black line to um, outline my cloud. Maybe I want no outline. So you can do it whatever you'd like to format your text and your uh, text box and your shape. Okay. If I wanted to add an image um, up here for problem of the day, I can go out to the web, type images, type math, clip art, choose an image, right click copy, whoops, let's come here, right click paste, as a review, if I double click and I go to wrap text, I can click in front of text, shrink it, and now it'll fit right here. And if I go to print preview, there is an example of a table. I've changed the form, I've formatted it. I've added shapes with text. I have added a header, clip art, and I've added a page border. So I've built upon all of my skills thus far. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and add some sort of table to your document. This, a great example of using a table is if you want to um, put a class list together and maybe you want to keep attendance for the week of December 3rd. You can list all your students. Okay, if you have 25 students, you would need 25 rows. Five days in the week, you would need uh, six columns altogether because you're going to have a column for names, and then you're going to have a column for each day of the week. Check off if the students were absent or they were late or they were present, and that's an example of using a table. You could always add a border. You can always add a title. You can add an image if you, if you care to. And finally, the last way that we can use a table is a calendar. So stay tuned for the next part of this tutorial. Go ahead and uh, submit anything that you complete with the table and formatting um, the shapes up to our Google site, and I will see you at the next tutorial. Thanks. Bye-bye.